Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining me this evening. I'm going to be talking about uh, some summertime strategies to help prevent the summer slump, right? So as parents, I know, you know, we tend to worry about, is our child going to forget what they've learned over the summertime and what we call the summertime slump? And this actually is a real thing. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about that and what we can do as parents in order to try to promote learning during the summertime. Um, and this particular episode is episode three, which is part of a parenting during a pandemic series. Um, we've already hosted uh, two more, two prior events on Mondays at 7 p.m. Um, and my name is Dr. Maribel Del Rio Roberts, and I've been um, hosting these um, this series for the last few weeks. Um, so I want to go ahead and get started. So as a child psychologist, I get a lot of questions from parents about how can I keep my child active during summertime, particularly during this period of time where we have so many um, limitations that are placed upon us in terms of and restrictions in terms of what we can access and what we can do. Um, we don't have as much access to the robotics or the aviation or science camps that maybe uh, your child would generally have been participating in. Um, so just because school is out doesn't mean that learning does not continue. Um, and the summer slide really is a real thing. It's not a joke. Um, and given that the schools tend closed you know, very abruptly at the end of the last school year, so that slide or that slump might be even more substantial than it might have been in the past. And you might be noticing that your child might be forgetting some pretty basic information that they might have already mastered. Um, so students generally, traditionally, over the summertime can lose up to two to three months of reading skills and about 20 to 50% of math skills if they're not doing any sort of learning over the summer. So that can present some real challenges for us because imagine, you know, we, our school year was cut short by two and a half months and then you add another two to three month gap to that, um, that can really affect learning and put children in a very difficult position when the school year resumes uh, the following academic year. So that's why it is important um, that as parents that we try to create these learning opportunities for our children over the summertime um, and they can be embedded in our day to day activities and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, so that summer slump can really create a huge gap in student knowledge if it's compounded over the years. So, for example, you know, they finish off the school year. They don't really engage in any active learning activities and then they start the new school year and if those skills were not necessarily reviewed then the child has some sort of a learning gap um, in that area um, and they might fall a little further behind so we really want to set our kids up for success um, and we already know that parental involvement is crucial during the school year as is so children that have parents that take the time to provide them guidance during when they're completing their homework assignments um, or is mo are monitoring and helping them structure their time and regularly checking in with teachers on their progress, these children tend to do better in the long term academically. And parental involvement and engagement over the summer is just as crucial to continued student learning to try to limit that particular gap. So summertime is really a great time for all types of learning opportunities for children. So when we talk about learning opportunities, it's not necessarily to say that we have to sit our children down with workbooks every day and drill them for two to three hours on reading and math activities. Um, you know, some of these structured types of worksheets and these activities can be helpful, but we also want to make it more active and more engaging so that the child doesn't necessarily build up a resistance or avoidance of these types of activities. We want to make it fun for them, um, especially because during the summer now, many 
camps are not available in certain areas or there are limitations or changes to the way that camps have been run where students might have been afforded some of these active learning opportunities on a regular basis. Um, so when we think about these active learning strategies, we can think about things like, for example, building reading and writing into our everyday activities. Um, one just brief little example is turning off the TV, um, turning the sound off on the TV and turning on the closed captioning. And so that way, when children are watching their favorite shows, you can have them practice for certain periods of time reading for understanding um, in terms of trying to keep up with what, what, they're, what they're watching. Um, maybe getting them to be the ones to read the directions for how to play a new game and to practice doing that out loud and to teach the other players how to play the game. Or by helping with meals, by having a child write down a grocery list at home or maybe helping to prepare the meal and reading the recipe out loud or helping to calculate and measure, um, you know, the measuring cups or the amounts of um, the, the items that are needed for the recipe. So those were just some just overall general tips or ideas in order to incorporate um, learning into just everyday activities. But we're gonna talk a little bit more about some specific areas that really benefit and should really be the focus during summertime. So we all realize and know the importance of reading um, and how crucial it is to our success in every area, not only academically, but in, even when it comes to our independent living skills, being able to read a recipe, to read labels on the back of foods, uh, being able to read directions or things that, are, um, that we need to follow. So reading should be incorporated and should be focused on every single day. And we don't have to, you know, focus on making our children sit there and try to read for two hours at a time. If your child has a passion for reading and they initiate that on their own, don't stifle it, encourage it. But a lot of children won't necessarily take the initiative on their own to say, I want to sit down and read every single day. They have a hard time structuring themselves in that way. Even though once they start reading, they actually find it quite enjoyable and might read for longer periods of time than they anticipated or initially agreed to do so. Um, but the minimum we want to strive for on a regular basis is maybe 15, 20 minutes uh, because that really helps to maintain decoding and comprehension skills. Um, and let the child be the one to make the choice in terms of what content they want to read. We, we of course want our children to learn for information, but especially in summertime, it should be a time to read for pleasure. So we should allow them to make the choice in terms of what they want to read. Um, and when you look at the research, you know, at the middle school level, reading four to five books over the summer has a positive impact on fall reading achievement. Um, comparable to attending summer school. So if we can get our kids to read, you know, a, a relatively good amount of books, you know, we can see that they're maintaining their learning um, and we tend to minimize that, that summer slump. Um, so some suggestions to try to promote the re reading on a daily basis. Um, if your local library is open and you feel comfortable taking your child to the library, then take them to the library often and let them choose which books they want to check out or even have them identify online which books they would like to reserve. And maybe I know a lot of local libraries are doing curbside pickup, stopping by and then just picking up the books or even reading books digitally. Some kids like to read books on the Kindle or um, and other types of iPads or other types of electronics. That's another way to help promote learning. Um, listening to books on tape. So reading, yes, it's wonderful to practice those decoding and reading comprehension skills, but listening to books on tape reinforces just as important skills. Um, it does help with auditory processing. It helps to reinforce some of these um, skill sets, um, as well as listening for comprehension. So listening comprehension, 
So listening to books on tape is also helpful if the child wants to kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, subscribe them maybe to a magazine that might be of interest to them. Um, even if it's for pleasure, um, you know, it doesn't have to be an informational magazine. Um, take turns reading to each other. A lot of kids get tired of reading for long periods of time, but maybe take turns and saying, okay, I'll read this page and then you read the next page. Um, and so the, that way you're also modeling the reading process for them. And if your kids are really excited about reading, let them stay up a little bit later. Um, and maybe give them the incentives to stay up half an hour later or an hour later if they're as long as they're reading and not necessarily on screen time or, you know, with electronics or TVs. Um, so these are all ways to create motivation and incentive to read on a regular basis. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so then, um, you know, Part of reading is the enjoyment to enjoy about read, to enjoy reading and to read for pleasure, to read chapter books, to read fish, fiction books, but it's also learning to read about our world. Some kids really love to learn about facts and acquire information, whether it's about the planet or recycling or dinosaurs or outer space. Um, so it's important to also help reinforce those interests as well. So there are lots of uh, different modalities that they can acquire this information. They can check out um, nonfiction books um, from the library, or there's uh, several magazines that are available as well. For example, Time for Kids Online has a lot of informational articles. Um, Newslia is another, and National Geographic Junior. Um, so it's good to try to expose our kids to different types of uh, media consumption. Okay, um, so what are some strategies for or some tips to really engage your child in the summer reading process? Well, read aloud together with your child every day. So sometimes, um, you know, children, part of the spending time with a parent is crucial in increasing motivation. So maybe they might not be so highly motivated to read on their own, but the fact that they might be spending time with mom or dad or grandma or grandpa in this joint activity um, really might increase their motivation to want to spend time reading. Um, and maybe make it fun by reading outdoors. Um, we don't have to necessarily do it sitting at a desk or a table. Maybe we can read together on the, at the park or in our backyard. Um, also sit and let your children read to you. Um, that also helps you get a better sense and assess where the child is and what skills they have maintained and which skills they possibly have um, lost over the summer so that you can provide additional support activities in those areas. And for younger children, you would want to point out the relationship between words and sounds to continuously reinforce those relationships. Another great way to promote summer reading is to set a good example. So if children see that we make the time as caregivers to read and model that behavior for them, then they're more likely to want to engage in that behavior because it's something that they see that we find pleasurable and enjoyable. And it's something that we like to spend our time doing. Um, keep lots of reading material available around the house um, and turn off the TV and have each person just sit together as a family and maybe read for a period of time. Um, read the same book your child is reading. So that's another way to engage them so that you can talk to them and dialogue with them about what, how, what they think about the story. Um, so this helps to develop good reading habits and to help develop that capacity for insight and thought because we might challenge them or pose certain questions that may, maybe make them think outside of the box. Again, letting kids choose what they want to read, um, even if it's fiction book, we just want to promote those healthy reading habits. Um, buying books on tape, especially for a child with a learning disability. Although we do want the child to take a little bit of time to try to practice their decoding and comprehension skills, we also want them to enjoy books um, and realize that 
reading, it can be an enjoyable process. Um, and so that will increase their motivation overall. So exposing children with to learning disabilities to books on tape can also be helpful. Um, or children that have visual impairments as well. And as you just go through your day, whether you're cooking or gardening or shopping, utilize these opportunities to pick out words and have your child read these words or attempt to read these words or to read sentences as well, out loud as well. Um, taking, you know, as access to books is really important, whether it's taking them to the library. Um, now they are, they have summer reading book clubs that are available virtually online. Um, checking, you know, calendars for particular activities that might be available where you have someone that's actually reading and it might be at a distance, it might done, be done virtually, where they're reading the book out loud to younger children um, and talking about the book with them. And this provides an opportunity not only for engaging in the reading process, but also seeing that there are other kids that are interested in spending time on this. Um, subscribing them to magazines and having these subscriptions be under their name. Um, children get really excited. I know my nine-year-old gets really excited when something comes in the, in the mail for her with her name on it. So having them look forward to getting things in the mail with their name on it and knowing, okay, I can't wait for my magazine to get here this month really helps to also stimulate that motivation. Um, <clears throat> try to ease that disappointment over summer separation, maybe from their favorite friends or um, from their classmates and encouraging them to, to become pen pals. So maybe they can write letters to each other or they can write emails or messages to one another. This helps to strengthen those writing skills and those conceptualization skills, um, as well as reading comprehension when they're reading the response. Making trips um, as a way to encourage reading. So when you're in the car, maybe having the child read out street signs or signs on certain buildings. And if they do spontaneously do that, on their own, reinforce that. Um, and they love positive reinforcement. It's more likely that they're gonna wanna do it again. Um, and maybe encouraging them to keep a summer scrapbook. So for example, keeping track of the activities or the things that they've done over the summer um, and having them write out captions. Um, these are all you know, helpful and useful things that keep them engaged and don't seem to, to them like they're doing schoolwork but they're still reinforcing their, their learning. There's a really cool tip that I came across, um, which I thought was neat in terms of promoting reading, uh, particularly reading comprehension skills. And it's called, they're called summer trading cards. Um, and this gives children the opportunity to dive deeper into characters um, that they're reading about in specific books. Um, and it helps them to also create new storylines. So basically what you do is that you help the, your child pick out a book um, that they've already read. Um, and then what you do is think about the characters um, and ask them certain questions like, what does this person look like? What does this, you know, what does, where does the story happen? What's their personality like? Um, what's the main problem in the beginning of the story? What's memorable about the character? What did you not like about the character and who does the character remind you of? So you get them to think about those characters in the story and then you ask them to list people from their real life who could be featured on a character trading card. So maybe it could be their mom, dad, siblings, grandparents, anyone in their life, a, a hero or an entertainer, a sports athlete or icon. Um, and have them come up with enough material to fill up the card. Um, and so same thing, like what's their personality like? What are their likes? What are their dislikes? Um, just have them describe that character as much as possible on an index card. And then once both character cards are finished, you have your character from your book and you have your real life character, then you can brainstorm with the child to come up with a story where the two characters meet. And then you have them talk about where do they meet? Where will they meet? Will they like each other? What will the conflict of the story be? How will the story end up? 
Um, and then maybe even if they really want to get creative with it, add a third or fourth character. So this is a good way to just keep them engaged and also promote that abstract thinking and generalization um, and really make it also relevant to their everyday lives. Okay, so those are the summer uh, trading cards. Um, there are also kids blogs available. Um, and kids blogs, really what they do is that they provide a safe, closed community so that students can blog over the summer. Um, and they can just kind of write about whatever's on their mind or whatever topics, thoughts they have that they want to share with others. Um, there are a few available. Um, that are in existence specifically geared towards children, edu blogs and kid blog do offer free blog space and they do have appropriate security measures in place. Um, and blogging helps to improve a child's writing and reading skills um, and also get their creativity flowing. Um, so these are all good opportunities that if your child displays an interest in doing, definitely re and encourage them to do so. Here's another really simple one that sometimes we don't always think about. What about family game night? Reading and spelling are reinforced in so many games that we can play with our children on a regular basis. So things, games like Scrabble or Taboo or taking the time to do crossword puzzles together is really a great way to polish up their skills. Um, other games, for example, such as Hangman or um, it also reinforces spelling skills. Monopoly um, is really great at promoting math skills because they have to kind of count their money um, and get change. And um, just playing cards with a deck of cards also helps them with their math skills as well. Um, so just simply enlarging and exposing them to as much vocabulary as possible whether it's through games or through reading or other applied activities is really useful in trying to minimize that slump. Now let's transition over and talk a little bit about math um, and the importance of also trying to incorporate math into our everyday activities. So what does the research say? Well, the largest summer learning losses for all children generally occur in mathematical computation. Um, which is about an average of two, two and a half, a little over two and a half months of uh, learning loss takes place over the summer. Um, so what are some suggestions that you can implement? Practice multiplication tables uh, by making each point, for example, in a basketball game worth seven points. So, okay, I just scored seven points. I made the basket. Now you made a second basket. How many points do you have now? So getting them to try to do this mental math or to remember their math facts um, is usually reinforced by incorporating it into games that they enjoy. Maybe asking your child to manage change if you're going through a drive through or showing them how to play math games online. Some kids really like that because it's much more visual and interactive. Um, or even making up math word problems, either when you're in the car or in the dinner table Kids like challenges oftentimes, especially if they think it's in the context of a game. If you're not testing them, but you're more so playing a game and you're challenging each other and then they get to, they get to create a word problem for you that you need to figure out, um, that also helps to make it just much more engaging. So um, I've touched a little bit upon um, the importance of reading and math and some ways to reinforce uh, learning during summertime, but there are other ways to also reinforce learning. One of these being getting outside and playing. Um, so it's so important. Um, the benefits of getting outside and playing is in, it, are numerous, um, particularly given that, you know, there aren't a lot of other things that we can be doing with our time nowadays. Um, so encouraging kids to get off their screens um, and to really just kind of get out there and become active is important. I was trying to, let me see if this actually works. I was trying to enlarge my screen, um, but it's not working as quickly as I had hoped. Um, okay, well, well, we'll leave it as is. Um, the slideshow. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um,
Okay. So what are some of the benefits of outdoor time? Um, outdoor time has numerous benefits. Um, what does the research say? Well, intense physical activity has positive effects on a variety of different areas, including academic achievement. Um, it helps to improve concentration. It helps with mathematical reasoning skills and reading. Um, and it helps to reduce disruptive behavior, particularly if you have kids that are really high energy. When you have children that are really high energy, they need to go outdoors, go outside, and expend some of that energy um, in order to, for them to be able to funnel their attention. Um, and so some things that maybe, you know, some suggestions are to try to get outside for at least an hour a day if possible. Um, and it doesn't have to be a continuous hour. It can be in spurts. Uh, but trying to get your child outside for about an hour uh, a day is really helpful. And that's where you tend to see um, the benefits. Having them maybe helping with walking your dog or maybe an elderly neighbor's dog if they're not able to get out. Um, going swimming outdoors if that's a possibility. If you have a pool in your yard or at the, you're able to go to the beach. Um, playing basketball or soccer as a family um taking walks and going for family bike rides these are all just ideas to help uh keep create that activity um those opportunities to be to remain active um another interesting idea is creating a garden um, and working together to establish and watch a garden grow so there are lots of different ideas for gardening that also help promote outside time and help promote learning um, so, for example, uh, container gardening for kids, creating small little containers, sometimes even out of water bottles. You can plant seeds in there and watch them grow or create a rain gauge. Um, fruit and vegetable art, um, spending time creating floral designs, uh, making a mud pie or planting a family tree, um, planning a scavenger hunt in the garden. There are lots of ideas and I've included a website on here that has tons of gardening activities for kids um, if you're interested in looking into these a little further. Um, there's also the idea, which I thought was really neat, of planting an alphabet garden. Um, so really any kind of gardening is a great way for kids to learn science and to understand how things grow and what they need in the environment to grow, like. We need water and oxygen and the importance of leaves and the absorption process of the plant. So these are all, you know, the importance of the sun. These are all great things that can be reinforced during the gardening process. Um, and so maybe planting a theme garden can make the learning experience even more fun. So for example, like an ABC garden. So you can pick out seeds that uh, of plants that start with each letter of the alphabet. So you pick out a, a seed that starts with an A and another with a B and another with a C. Um, and then you can have the child either make a tag for each plant or paint the name on the plant of the plant on a rock that they put, um, you know, next to the plant. Um, and they can learn all about these plants as well. And if you live in an urban area where you don't have room in a backyard, to plant these, you can try doing an abbreviated version of this. Maybe just choosing certain vegetables or flowers that start maybe with letters that spell out the child's name or the initials and then planting them in a little window box or a small pot. Um, these are all ideas that again, we can incorporate and thread learning into um, and it's activities that they enjoy doing together um, with their caregivers. There are also plenty of opportunities um, to perform summer experiments. So I don't know about you all, but my kids love experiments, particularly lately uh, slime. Um, that's kind of their more recent preoccupation, but anything really that becomes fizzy and bubbly and that they can just kind of mix things together. Um, but there are tons of different scientific topics to investigate over the summer that kids would really be drawn to. So just have them come up with a hypothesis to come up with a topic that they want to research. Um, and maybe there are different things they can do, like research just a topic they want to know more about, 
or maybe observe a specific insect. So maybe go out at night and capture lightning bugs in a plastic jar if you think your, your child would like that. Or, um, you know, maybe listening to the sounds all around them. Maybe making a wind chime. <laughs> Excuse me. Making a wind chime out of aluminum cans and plastic bottles and a string and hanging that outdoors. So when the wind blows, they can compare the different sounds that the different uh, bot containers make. Um, maybe observing the sun's impact is another activity. Uh, placing an ice tray in the sun and one in the shade. Um, and then comparing how long it takes for the ice in each tray to melt. Um, and then maybe coloring ice. Kids love food coloring and they love adding food coloring to everything. So adding different colors of food dye um, to crushed ice and then noticing how the colors mix to create new ones. There's also portable volcanoes that they can make with baking soda. Um, and so there are lots more activities that are available online if your child is really interested in, in science experiments. Um, another really neat um, experience, particularly now that we're faced again with some constraints based on what's open, what's available and where we can go, um, or sometimes we just might not be ready to venture out into public places. Um, there are lots of uh, different sites that are offering virtual field trips. Um, and they're a great way to promote summertime learning. Um, some of them are offered locally, some are state sponsored or nationally sponsored. Um, and they can really give you an inside glimpse without ever having to leave your house. So some of these possible field trips could include museums or botanical gardens, um, national parks also offer virtual field trips, historical monuments, um, and even uh, virtual field trips to art exhibits. Um, so there are many numerous um, activities available um, in your area. And so it's just important to just think about, think outside of the box and how can we continue to expose our children to new information and help them feel like they're getting some sort of hands-on experience. Um, so we've talked about reading and math and um, science and the importance of being active, um, not only physically, but also being an active citizen, active citizen and continuing to reinforce citizenship skills um, during the summertime um, is also really crucial. Um, so engage children in communing, community activities, even during the pandemic, it is possible. So maybe encourage them to set up a food or diaper drive uh, to donate to a charitable organization or to a group. Um, create thank you cards to hospital workers and first responders. Maybe put together care packages uh, to be dropped off at hospitals and other donation sites. Um, and so Citizen Kid offers a collection of books that helps to inform children about the world and help them inspire them to be good citizens. It talks about impor the important citizenship skills um, and helps reinforce that. So if you take the time to read these books with your child and then encourage them to participate in some community activities, um, I think it will reinforce um, what they're learning about. So let's also talk about drama. Uh, because drama is also really a great way for students to learn um, and to reinforce learning. Um, and really, when we think about early learning and early childhood, literacy and dramatic play really come together because children love to act out their favorite stories and they do that fairly frequently. Um, and so you can translate this not only and apply this not only to young children, but also to school age and older children as well. So maybe, you know, plan with your children to give yourselves at least a week to put together a performance. Um, maybe you can pick anything from a traditional fairy tale to a Disney-based uh, story or whatever it is that interests the child. Um, and encourage them to work with you to write their own play, to act it out. Um, and then they can assign roles to other people in the family who want to participate. So help them rehearse their lines, maybe try to 
design sets or create costumes um, and then actually record it, have, play, have it play out and then maybe record it so that they can share it with other people. Um, and kids tend to be really proud of that. Kids love to share um, their work with others. Um, and it might not be maybe the following time it's not a play, but it can be something like putting together a concert or a magic show. Um, so these are all ways to continuously uh, reinforce engagement and promote learning. So I've included um, some online activities, some resources um, that have some good educational websites to explore. Um, and if you have some time to go through them, um, I think that you can find some really worthwhile information. We have National Geographic Kids, Discovery Kids, iCivics, NASA Kids Club, uh, Project NOAA, uh, Design Squad Nation, My Wonderful World, the PBS Kids Lab, and Brain Pop. Um, another outlet, which we don't always necessarily think about when it comes to our kids. I know I like to listen to podcasts and I like to listen to all different sorts of podcasts, but I don't always necessarily take the time to think and say, hey, maybe my kids would like to listen to a podcast. And there are podcasts that are aimed at children um, and they really do help promote deep critical thinking skills, depending on the topic that they're listening to, as well as listening comprehension skills. Some of them might be science focused. They could be all about dogs, or they could be social studies history focused, or um, you know, they might just be related to self-confidence and self-awareness. Um, so there are, I've included um, a different lists of podcasts that you might be interested in looking into for your child. Um, if they're interested in any of these areas. So there are a few here that I've listed for English and language arts with a, a little brief description. And then we have some science podcasts as well. Um, Earth Rangers is really nice because it appeals to both little kids and bigger kids. Um, and it's really more so of an animal-based um, podcast and introduces children to like the Earth about sustainability and biodiversity um, and it infuses animal jokes in there, which kids really tend to like. So again, it's worth taking the time if we wanna to try to transition them from screen time that isn't necessarily educational or as productive to spending time engaging with media, but in ways that they can um, benefit more so. Um, and then here are some other podcasts um, that are related to or focused on history and social studies. Um, so, you know, I would, I want you guys all to remember whether, you know, you're a parent, a caregiver, um, or just, you know, maybe looking to work with or hoping to work, working with families, um, that summertime is really an important time and it's a crucial time. Um, although we want to make it engaging and fun for our kids, um, and we want to provide them with stimulating opportunities to enjoy themselves. We also want, have to be conscious in creating and conscientious in creating these learning opportunities for them um, as much as possible. And it does take a little bit of brain power or work some of the time, but I think once it becomes a habit, it just becomes part of your lifestyle. Um, and maybe even at first creating some structure and scheduling time to engage in these activities because they might not necessarily be part of our regular routine initially until these are things that we tend to gravitate towards more naturally and our children themselves will request and want to engage them uh, in them spont spontaneously on their own. Um, so I hope that these recommendations have been useful um, and I hope that everyone's enjoying their summer and I look forward to next Monday at 7 p.m. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a good evening.